which area of foundry operations is Ginkgo Barworks proprietary sequence space the most valuable or worth, or worth the most? I'm really interested by this question, this topic of discussion, because a lot of it has to relate to also questions that I've raised and even questions that some investors had even raised similar along the lines of what I had mentioned before me when Ginkgo Bioworks had been in previous acquisitions before it had acquired Bayer, Zymergen, or that AI type of company. It still really doesn't, it's not entirely clear and it doesn't make entire sense to me why Ginkgo Bioworks would still be so keen on making all these acquisitions when in reality, the fact is that many of these acquisitions seem to offer some limited application or some limited benefit to their foundry business, if anything, that will help them serve their clients. For example, if we're looking at one application that a lot of biotech companies focus on has to do with enzyme optimization or performing some type of directed evolution of enzymes, and usually in this process and then you want to look at maybe an exponentially large space of some enzymes and determine which mutations to some given sequence, amino acid sequence from the enzyme would result in the best associated function for some task. And I think that the fact that Ginkgo Bioworks was kind of buying up all, performing all these acquisitions and getting all these sequences, obviously we may never entirely know the extent to which they, um, they used any of the sequences that they got from the proprietary databases from other companies. But I think that now, even with the products that were supposed to have been maybe gone public and gone to market by now, there still hasn't seemed to be many applications of potential benefits of the amino acid sequences that they're looking at or they're using and how that could actually help them serve or optimize the needs of their customers. I know that probably more in the ag tech space, they're getting more close to realizing some type of commercial benefit, but it still seems like either way that we look at it, in my, in my perspective and in my opinion, it doesn't really seem like that was as strategic as maybe just continuing to slow down their cash burn by not performing that type of acquisition in the first place, which then could have, which then could have maybe helped help keep their stock, um, their stock price higher than the New York Stock Exchange by having to avoid all this type of negative press about their mass layoff and other types of changes to their operations that they've happened that they've been making over the past couple of weeks. But I think that still maybe the ag tech space can remain a helpful, you know, a good portion of the foundry revenue for Ginkgo Bioworks. But in comparison to the pharmaceutical space, I don't really think that the ag tech space has as much uh, potential or much as much realization of downstream value share because a lot of those companies in the ag tech space, they do participate in some type of fermentation for scaling up their product and then they ship it to countries all over the world depending upon whichever pesticides they're targeting. And um, it just seems pretty difficult even to do that more at scale now because a lot of those companies, they, as I mentioned and alluded to, they don't really seem to have as much IP as they, as they try to communicate or purport to the public. And on top of that, a lot of these chemical processes or other metabolic processes that they're trying to optimize so that they can get this so that they can reach a certain titer in their cells, which is used for scaling up and ultimately delivering their commercial product. It's really not as exp or not as cheap as many of them try to say it is when they're commercializing it. So I think that all of these observations just go into mind to show that there is still many types of difficulties or hurdles to using its foundry model that Ginkgo Bioworks has had to still deal with for years, even despite in spite of the fact that they that they made an acquisition of Bayer and um, of Bayer. And then um, I think that the fact that still um, it doesn't seem like the agricultural side of things was enough to turn to turn the, the figures for the revenue around to actually result in some increase in revenue year over year from uh, 2023 to 2024. I think that that just kind of makes it seem like more that all of these acquisitions kind of seem to appear to be a big gamble and I hope that it can play out, but we obviously still have to wait to see how what happens in certain areas.